Good evening. Right now, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on lower limb prosthetic devices. This is a lower limb prosthetic device, and it's the most common type of device given to someone who's had an amputation below their knee. It's made up of three parts. This is the foot, this is the pylon, and this is the socket. The socket is the part where an amputee's residual limb will fit into. Tonight, I'm going to be focusing on the prosthetic socket because in a way, this is the most critical part of this whole device. If the socket doesn't fit or if it doesn't work properly, this whole thing is useless. As you can tell, the socket is a rigid shell and it needs to be rigid so that it can support the full weight of the patient and so that it can allow for a more natural gait when walking. If the socket weren't rigid, it would be really difficult to stabilize yourself when you're trying to walk. Now, it's absolutely critical that the socket is a perfect fit for the person wearing it, and this is really difficult to achieve. It requires several casting and molding procedures, and often several office visits for a patient to see the doctor in order to get the fit to be just right. Then, over time, maybe you gain weight, you lose weight, your residual limb is going to naturally change in size, and when it does, your socket will no longer fit. Then you have to go through this whole process again. Another casting, another molding, another weight for a new prosthetic device. New materials and technologies are being developed to help streamline this fabrication process. But as many of them are still within development, they're not widely available around the world. Clearly, you can tell that the making and fitting a prosthetic device is very time consuming not only for the expert who's making it, but also for the amputee. Now, imagine what this process might be like in a poor or developing region, where access to water or electricity or transportation are very limited or not available at all. How do people here get prosthetic legs? Well, the model goes something like this. An expert will travel, often from overseas, in just a few days, they work on fitting as many people as they can with the materials and resources that they've been able to bring with them. And then after these few short days, the expert will leave, and they might not return for several years. So then what happens in three months when your residual limb has changed in size and you can no longer wear your device? You can no longer wear it, and it, without it causing a lot of pain when walking, and also due to further possible injury, needing a higher amputation. This leaves hundreds of devices just abandoned and not used after only a short period of time. Clearly, this model is not sustainable for people living in these poor and developing regions, as access to prosthetic services and devices are very limited if existent at all. And the people living here are completely dependent on third-party actors, such as donors and experts. I'm a mechanical engineering PhD student at the University of Colorado, and my work has been focused in medical device design. While I know that the research my colleagues and I work on has true value and will make an impact one day, for the past few years, I've been trying to find a way that I can take my skills outside of the laboratory and apply them directly in the world. This past summer, I had the opportunity to do just this. I traveled to South Africa on a project funded by the National Science Foundation and USAID to help design lower limb prosthetic sockets for people living in these remote areas around the world. The goal of our project was to design a socket that could be made and assembled using the resources available in these rural areas. Also, we wanted to ensure that the socket could be adjustable. This would help people uh, to be able to change the fit of their socket over time as the residual limb changes. I spent most of my time in Pretoria working with other engineers and prosthetic experts in order to learn what the critical parts of prosthetic design were. Near the end of my stay, I had the opportunity to travel to an area where I could see firsthand what the environment was like that we were actually designing the socket for. I traveled to Live Village, an orphanage just outside of Durban. It was about an eight-hour drive from where I, I was staying in Pretoria and tucked back in some beautiful green rolling hills. 
Surrounding the village was an area called Cottonlands, and it was part of one of the largest townships in the KwaZulu-Natal region of South Africa. One day I had the opportunity to walk around Cottonlands with these three young women here. I had been telling them about the prosthetics work that I was working on, and they were gracious enough to show me around the community so that I could get just a small taste of what life was like there. And this is what I saw. Houses were built from remnant materials, mud, sticks, and stones. While electricity was often available, it was typically spliced off from some central location. There was about 85% unemployment in the region, and the majority of people were paid from government from the social grants, which totaled only 85 US dollars a month. I could tell. Life here was difficult. The girls introduced me to several people that day when we walked around, but there was one man in particular that really stood out to me. This man was an above-knee bilateral amputee, meaning that he had lost both of his legs above the knee. When I met him, he was lying in a bed, and it looked as though he hadn't moved for days. There was a wheelchair in the room, but I could tell it hadn't been used very often. Even if he could use it, he would require assistance just to leave his home, as the rugged and hilly terrain surrounding him would require even an able-bodied person assistance in order to move across it in a wheelchair. When I asked him if he would like to have prosthetic legs, he told me, if I had prosthetic legs, I could go back to work. If I had prosthetic legs, I could play outside with my kids. I heard so many of these pleas from amputees that I talked with in South Africa. When I returned to Live Village, I had the opportunity to talk to one of the medical doctors there about the work that we were doing. And while I could tell she was excited and interested in the work, there was something deep down that really troubled her. She told me, I think it's great you're working on this new adjustable socket. But if you really want to make an impact here, the whole even if the technology is perfected, the whole prosthetics model has to change. People living in these remote types of areas cannot and should not have to rely on experts coming in to help provide services. If you really want to make a difference, you need to bring the development of the technology into the community itself so that the people there can help create and modify their own prosthetic devices. Local materials have to be used so that when an issue arises, the people there have the skills and the knowledge in order to fix the problem themselves right then. Luckily, this methodology is being used around the world. This is Krista Donaldson, the CEO of DREV, Design Revolution. She and her colleagues work on designing medical devices that are accessible to people living on less than just $4 a day. One of their projects is called the Remotion Prosthetic Knee. And in this project, DREV has worked closely with local prosthetic experts living in rural areas of India and South America in order to design a prosthetic knee that is not only accessible to the people living here, but is actually used by the people living here. They do this by ensuring that the design of the knee incorporates certain cultural demands, such as being able to sit on the ground cross-legged. Also, by using the local materials, manufacturing resources, and experts they're able to ensure that the cost of the device is financially affordable to the people living here. The Remotion Prosthetic Knee has a retail cost of 80 US dollars and is worn by over 7,000 people around the world. The industry standard for continued use of a prosthetic knee is about 65%. The Remotion Knee is used longer than six months in at least 79% of cases. That's a significant improvement. DREV and their team continue to work on designing medical devices to make an impact for the people living in these impoverished and remote areas around the world. My experience in South Africa has been life-changing, and it's been something I have felt called to share with all of you. It's opened my eyes to a way of life that I just don't get to see. It's provided me with a perspective on how to make an impact, and an impact that lasts. It's inspired me to want to go back to South Africa, to continue what we have only just begun. 
I hope that one day communities all around the world won't have to wait on experts coming in to help provide services. That one day the people in these communities can help use their own skills and their own knowledge to help serve those around them. I often think of the man lying in the bed. What if? What if he didn't have to wait for someone to come fit him with prosthetic legs? What if there was someone in his community who could fit him with prosthetic legs right now? What if his work became fitting other people in his community with prosthetic legs? My dream is that one day this man and those just like him won't have to wait, won't have to wonder, but that one day they could go back to work, that they could walk, that they could play outside with their kids, and who knows, maybe even one day run. Thank you.